All right, guys, uh, today I'm at El Mirage here in California, and uh, I wanted to do a quick review uh, of my Yamaha XT250 uh, that I have owned for over a year now. I purchased this bike in uh, about March 2023. This is the 2023 model, and uh, I just want to talk about the things that I like and the things that I don't like so much about this bike and uh, how capable this bike is and um that's pretty much it all right let's get to it all right guys i'm going to start talking about the things that i like about this bike and why i decided to go with this uh particular model okay i did my homework i was uh you know i went to different dealerships and at the end i um i decided to go with this one and at the end i was in between this one and the drc 400 okay um pretty much the main reason why i decided to go with this one is two reasons this one has uh is fuel injected uh, this is a 2023 uh, model fuel injected and number two and probably the most important uh to me uh is the seat height you know this is the seat height or this bike has the lowest seat bike um oh, i'm sorry the lowest uh seat height out of all bikes on this segment, you know, on the 300, 200 um, cc's, um, I believe it's at 32.9 uh, inches tall. I am six feet tall, about 250 pounds, and um, uh, 245 pounds, and, you know, but I have short legs, so this one is just perfect for me. You know, when I try to keep my leg over the DRC 400, I struggle a little bit, and, you know, I, I, I eventually, I might end up getting one of those too, you know. I love the the, the way those those bikes look, um, which is main reason why I decided to go with this one as well, because I love the rounded headlight. You know, I love how this bike looks, you know, how slim it is. Um, you know, I love the double fenders, the double front fenders, uh, rounded headlight, and how simple this bike is. I know some bikes, you know, they have some other features like ABS, like the KLX 300 uh, or the CRF 300. I believe they come with uh, ABS. This one is just, you know, pretty simple. It's a pretty simple bike. And I love it. I love it. I like the way it looks, uh, how light it is, how nimble it is. This bike really feels so light when you're riding, um, you know, especially in... in hard terrain it's really easy really easy this thing can climb anything you know this is a little goat you know a little tractor it's not super fast but to me the power that it has is adequate to do the stuff that i that i like doing you know like i'm i'm, I'm at you know here at the old mirage with my kids and you know we come here quite often my daughter right now she's sitting on the uh, kawasaki klx 110 and my son is on the uh, Polaris uh, Phoenix 200. Uh, great bikes, but you know, I wanted to get something where, you know, it's not too powerful where they have to, you know, they're gonna be struggling keeping up with me. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with my channel, I had a uh, Yamaha YFZ 450 uh, before this bike. And it was always a challenge for my kids to keep up with my bike, with my speeds. And you know, it's it's honestly to me, it's it's uh, it's more fun to ride a, a slow bike fast than riding a fast bike slow. Um, you know, in my opinion. So this bike is, um, you know, definitely, um, you know, very capable, and um, you know, I'm I'm very happy with it so far. So I'm gonna talk about the things that I have uh, put on the bike. Um, skid plate, um, it's a generic skid plate that I order online, uh, nothing fancy. Uh, with these bikes, um, in California, they come with the uh, mission control system or like a, a I don't even, the uh, uh, canister type of thing. I don't even know what it's called, but um, you know, it's for the mission uh, control. And you know, it's hard to find that the skid plate that that fits right there without making you know major cuts or modifications to the skid plate so i came across this one uh pulled the trigger it was like about a 
you know, about a hundred bucks. And, um, you know, I order it, you know, the other thing that I put on this thing is, um, the handguard or bark busters, uh, whatever you want to call them. Um, this one already took a hit. Uh, I was running with my kids, um, in the loose sand and it just, I dropped the bike and took a hit. Nothing happened to it. Levers was fine. Uh, so it did its job. So, uh, and this, the, um, bar racers, that is a must, honestly, in my opinion, especially if you're riding off road. Um, the, uh, the, the bike, you know, without this, the bars are like really low, about like two inches lower. And when you're standing, it's really hard, uh, really hard for you to, uh, maneuver the bike. So that, in my opinion, is, is a must. Okay. And, um, now, uh, I'm going to talk about the things that I don't like about this bike. So, so far it has, uh, I have put in, uh, about 1600 miles on it, you know, and, uh, one of the things that I don't like about this bike, definitely. And it's probably one of the, uh, major complaints that people has on these bikes is the, the, uh, foot bags. So these are super tiny. So I need to order new ones for sure. Um, you know, but I, I didn't want to order, uh, the foot pegs without ordering a new, um, shifter or shift lever because with the, with the boots, when you're riding, you know, it's really hard to get your feet, your foot underneath and just, you know, make the, uh, um, you know, changing the gears. So I'm going to order, uh, wider foot pegs and, uh, definitely a longer, um, you know, shift lever once I find them. Um, you know, I mean, this one, it's okay for street riding because you're sitting most of the time. But if you're off-roading, that thing, you know, after a while, you get tired and, you know, it, it hurts. So, um, what else I don't like about this bike? Oh, uh, the uh, speedometer. So, definitely, these bikes come with a 15 um, front sprocket, 15 tooth. And that makes the um, the speedometer not being accurate. So it's usually about, I will say between six and 10 miles per hour different. Um, so that's one of the things that is kind of annoying, but I already get used to it. So I'm definitely gonna change the uh, the front sprocket to a 16 tooth sprocket. I, I, I check on different blocks and that's what they recommend to make it more accurate. And also you get more power on the top end. Uh, you lose some on the lower end, uh, but it's okay. I think the, the bike is very capable uh, as it is. Um, I don't know why the dealership or Yamaha doesn't, you know, put a 16 tooth uh, sprocket, knowing that this bike is is not accurate, um, or at least the speedometer is not accurate. Um, and uh, so that's another thing that I don't like, you know, the speedometer, foot pegs, and what else? I'm just going around this bike just to um, remember things that I don't like. Um, oh, um, the rear suspension. You have to tune it a little bit. I mean, especially, as I said, I'm about 245 pounds. And if my son rides with me on this one, I usually don't, I mean, you know, he can he can do it because, you know, it's he has a, the, um, the the packs right here for, for the passenger. Um, and he can do it, uh, but definitely not, I would not recommend this on a long trip or something for, you know, with a passenger, unless you, um, replace the, the rear shock or just, just adjust it. So the spring will be, um, compressed a little bit more and, you know, cause otherwise right now, if I just push it hard, see, even by hand. So even the front suspension is a little bit soft. But other than that, I think uh, this is a very capable, uh, great looking bike. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm extremely happy with this bike. I think I made the right choice. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, there you have it. So um, please leave me a note. Um, if you guys have any comments, any questions uh, or suggestions on, on things that I can do on this bike to make it better, more efficient, um, you know, different seat, different anything. If you guys have any anything uh, to, to suggest, let me know. Okay, that's it.
Thank you, guys. Bye.